So this video is about fine grade auditing. We are going to create an audit policy and we're going to um, do some inserts and selects and see how it shows up in the audit trail. So the first thing I want to do is actually log into the database. And uh, uh, let's do show parameter audit. And uh, right now it's set to DB, which I think it needs to be set for for this fine grained auditing to sh to work because it's going to go to um, the audit trail is actually going to go to a table which we're going to look at. So the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to create a user, and that user might already be there. So let's go ahead and drop the user. So let's go ahead and create them. Create user eSaleo identify by eSaleo. Spaces eSaleo. Default. The only thing that we need to, to be able to create a policy is this grant execute on DBMS FGA to Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to do is actually to create a table in the HR from the HR schema. So let's go ahead and connect to him. HR, HR. And let's go ahead and create a table. Employee. So we've created him. So now, <clears throat> now I want to create my uh, fine grained auditing policy. And I'm actually going to do it as the eSaleo user. So let's go ahead and connect it to eSaleo. And I have a policy ready to go. Let's take a look at it. So the policy is dbmsfga.addPolicy. In this case, the scheme is HR. The table is called Employees Test. The policy name is Ed's Audit Policy. And the audit condition here is the first name is null. And we're looking at inserts, updates, deletes, and selects. So if we do an insert uh, where the first name is null or a select where the first name is null, it's going to show up. And, uh, um, and we're enabling it and uh, to turn it on right now. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, the policy is now created. Uh, in fact, we can check on that by looking at DBA audit policy. So let's go ahead and look at that. Select. So this is the policy I've just created. So that's great. Um, so now let's create some transactions. I'm actually going to go back to HR, 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 and uh, um, I have a few inserts I'm going to do. No, um, I'm going to do two inserts and a select. So let's look at those. Yeah, insert one. Now notice that our our audit condition is first name is null. So let's look at insert one. In insert one, our first name is Ed. So when we insert this, this is this particular record or transaction will not be uh, um, audited. But let's look at insert two. Insert two as well. And in this case, I'm forcing a null for the first name, and so this insert should be audited. Uh, um, later, after I do this, I'm going to do a select star from the 
the entire employees test and excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> and um, if I do a select star from employees it's going to end up pulling this record so it will be selecting this table or this particular record with a null value so we in the end we should see two um, records in the audit table this one because this was inserted and also a second one where we're doing a select so let's go ahead and run that now that's done. Notice that um, this last record has um, the first name is null. Uh, um, so, so that's how that's going to show up in the audit. Uh, so let's take a look at that right now actually. So um, let's format this just a little bit. transaction ID. How does that happen? Trans Change this to transaction ID. Should be. Oh, I have too many. Transaction ID. Now we're running. And sure enough, now we have two records. One is the insert and it actually has a transaction ID and one is the select and the selects don't have transaction IDs. And uh, um, that's it for this video.